uh, wish everyone a very good evening. So <clears throat> we are uh, going to be starting our session. And let me just go ahead and share the PPT. So that's going to be our topic. So I hope all of you are able to see the first slide. And uh, since we are uh, just starting off to see the first slide, then uh, I just want to make sure that uh, you know we are uh, settled down and we are uh, going to make sure that we utilize this uh, session to the best. I will try to keep it to under an hour so that we are done by roughly 9.30. And uh, just, uh, you know, if you can just type on the chat window, uh, you know, how many of you uh, among all the three sections in uh, GMAT Verbal, how many of you think RC is your biggest culprit? How many of you feel that RC is your biggest challenge as opposed to, and, and if in case uh, sentence correction is your challenge or uh, critical reasoning is your challenge, I'm fine with that as well. So you can uh, type that as well. But I just like to understand and uh, like to know what your challenge is. So I'm just seeing that. Yeah, SCNCR. So some of you are having a challenge with RC. Uh, but for you, some of you, it may not be a challenge, in which case it's a good way for us to kind of go back and uh, revisit, right? Um, and I know that, you know, RC is uh, hogging up a lot of time, right? So people have a problem with uh, reading comprehension speed. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to be giving you uh, some effective, uh, you know, kind of uh, strategies with regards to how to approach reading comprehension on the GMAT, right? Um, so first things first, what I'm going to uh, really ask you is, uh, I'm going to ask you the first question. Let me just put the first question over here, which is uh, how important is it for you to understand the passage, correct? Just think about it on a scale of 1 to 10. If I could just ask the first question. How important is it for you to understand the passage fully? Give me any number. One being the least, 10 being the most. What do you think could be the importance of understanding the passage? Eight. Great. Eight. Okay. So I got a couple of people with eight. Any other, uh, anyone else who thinks a number that is lower, higher, so I got 8, 4, someone said 10, 6, 9, um, then we have a couple of people with 10, 6, 6, 8, great, okay, 9, 5. Now, I want you to answer the second question, correct? How important is it for you to answer the questions correctly? How important is it to answer the questions correctly? What would be the number for that? I'm still waiting. MJ says 10, correct? Right, 10, excellent. See, uh, Bharat or Chandan, why would it be six or eight? That is your only task on the GMAT. I want you to remember the task in front of you. The task is not to understand the passage. The task is not to do a PhD, correct? The task is not for you uh, to show them the map and say, look, I understood everything. But uh, unfortunately, I was not able to answer the questions. You have one goal and one goal alone on the GMAT, correct? And I want you to remember this. And that goal is to answer the questions correctly. But unfortunately, what's happened is between reading the passage and answering the questions, here is the classic thing that happens. People end up focusing a lot on the passage, right? So here is how it works. You start off the GMAT and then you kind of get your first RC passage, correct? You are full of energy. Then what you do, you go through the first paragraph, right? You try to understand it. Many a times, you may even reread certain lines, correct? 
and then you cannot go on to the second paragraph again you read it in detail and all this while you are writing a very detailed map of whatever you have understood correct and whatever is written and in this way you end up spending you know anywhere around 3 uh, to 4 minutes in just understanding the passage correct now what happens is let's say that you were to spend 5 minutes uh, in uh, you know uh, understanding the passage correct no matter how fast you go uh, on the gmat reading comprehension questions would require you to comprehend each answer choice right especially when it comes uh, to inference and you have to then keep going back to the passage and uh, trying to understand basically you are ending ending up spending 5 minutes for reading the passage and let's say another 5 minutes for answering questions when people come and tell me that they have a problem on the gmat with regards to timing i can almost always you know point out to a couple of culprits couple of you know these uh, issues challenges that students face and one of the challenges is this if you're going to be spending right uh, 10 minutes correct per passage 5 minutes for understanding and let's say 5 minutes for answering correct 8 to 10 minutes on an average think about it you are going to be spending 40 minutes for four passages correct i just want you to do a math 40 minutes for four passages right that essentially leaves you with hardly 26 minutes correct 25 minutes right and in 25 minutes you need to be answering the rest of the questions you're going to get about 22 other questions especially cr questions right sentence correction still it will take 90 seconds but cr is going to take you more than 2 minutes so what happens is each time you see an rc passage if your approach is fundamentally flawed correct then you are going to spend that much time you are going to end up you know uh trying to remember too much too many details so also what this approach does is apart from taking up a lot of your mental um you know kind of like your time it also ends up taking a lot of your mental bandwidth right it takes up a lot of your mental energy so if you feel that you are running out of mental stamina by the fourth passage correct the chances are you are probably spending way too much mental energy trying to read and understand all the passages correct what i'm going to be showing is how do you not invest that time that mental energy in understanding the passage completely when we read it the first time instead shift your attention shift your energy shift your time to answering the questions because that's where you are going to be rewarded correct so that's the actual uh, you know meat of what we are going to be discussing A lot of times people come and say, uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, that Arun, I am, you know, having time issues on the GMAT. Now think about it: having a timing issue on the GMAT is it a symptomatic issue or is it a diagnostic? Or let me put it this way: is it a symptom of a problem or is it the problem itself? Correct. I would like you to think about it. Let's say I have a headache. Correct. Is headache a symptom of the problem or is it the real problem? you will understand that headache is not the real problem the real problem is something that is underlying so when you say uh, i am running out of time the problem is uh, you know more uh, underlying and that usually uh, happens to be reading comprehension okay uh, just i'm just looking at uh, if there is i'd skip the inference except question so my strategy is to uh, so bharat you may not get a lot of except questions on the gmat right uh so it's very rare that you get uh, a lot of except questions so please uh, just just be careful on that uh, only 1 in 13 correct in actual gmat with destroyed correct right so all of you with me on this page so now i'm going to do this i'm going to get on uh, to the next slide correct so uh, let us let us uh, i'm just trying to see if i can share my full screen and uh, if uh, you are able to see my full screen okay now uh, there are two things that uh, we have to understand is uh, reading right though it's one word reading in reality there are two words okay the first is skimming and the other is scanning okay and the difference between skimming and scanning and i'm just trying to see if uh, you are able to see the screen now um let me share it again yeah 
Got it. So <clears throat> the difference between uh, skimming and scanning, so it's important for us to understand what is skimming, what is scanning. Now, let us assume that uh, you were to, sorry about it, I'm just going back and forth on the screen, but uh, thank you. Sorry for this back and forth. So what is skimming? Skimming is, let's assume that you were to read the newspaper in the morning, correct? And uh, let's say you have five minutes to, uh, you know, just glance through it, correct? What are you going to do? You're probably going to just look at the headlines, correct? You don't know what to anticipate, right? Because this is the morning news. So you probably end up reading it, but uh, you kind of get just a sense of uh, the kind of news. If after keeping the newspaper back, I were to ask you to pick specific things. For example, if I were to say, can you tell me what was the score in the match yesterday? What would you do? You would go back to the specific part in the passage, correct? Where you have probably read it, correct? So you're not going to go and read the whole newspaper again. But you essentially know where to go. That is scanning. Right? So the reason I'm saying you need to know the difference between skimming and scanning is what do you think you're going to do on the GMAT? I want you to think. Right? These are two very different reading styles. Correct? In the first reading style, you are looking at it as an overview. Second reading style, you are actually looking at specific uh, places where you could find your answer. So the question to you on the GMAT, what do you think is happening? Do you think we are going to be skimming? or scanning, or both. Is it only scanning? Aren't we also expected to do skimming? Both? Right. Correct? So the whole idea is for you to understand that in the first 90 seconds, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, a little this, 90 seconds, right? Two minutes at the most. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be skimming for all the passages. When you get into the passage, right, it is important for you to take a deep breath because a lot of times on the GMAT, what you'll realize is you might have just solved a very difficult CR question, correct? Many a times when we start reading a passage, there is almost a residual energy that you tend to carry from the previous question. And, uh, you know, we just end up marking an answer and uh, we kind of uh, get on to RC. Our brain instinctively starts reading, right? And when we start reading, what happens is our brain gets into this mode of, you know, just, just reading, but there is also this previous question that is holding you back, correct? It's almost like your brain has some part of the previous question along while you're solving the RC passage. So the best thing before you start a passage, take a deep breath. Okay. Just tell yourself, help the you know, hit the mental reset button. Correct. So tell yourself, you know, I just need to maintain my focus for the next two minutes. Correct. And the way I would look at it when reading it for the first time when I'm skimming is I'm like a bird circling a field. Correct. So a bird that is circling a field, if you realize. Uh, you know, is just looking for where its prey is. It is not getting into the details, right? So when I read a passage, I'm just looking at it and saying, okay, so this guy is talking about various explanations for volcanic eruptions. He starts off the first paragraph by talking about the conventional theory of volcanic eruption, correct? Now, I don't need to know what is a conventional. I just read through it, right? So I'm not trying to invest a lot of my time and energy in actually understanding it. I'm just getting that sense of what it is. Once I'm done with that, I get to the second point. And then in the second paragraph, he says, however, there was further research done in the 90s, which basically showed through light on something else. Correct. Now I know that, look, he's just talking about this theory. And he has some, you know, hypothesis in the first paragraph. He kind of has another one or another set of experiments in the second one. And then finally, the third paragraph would conclude by saying, recent research on volcanic eruptions has helped us understand this, um, you know, uh, more. Correct? Now, 
that's all we have we have just three paragraphs correct now in under two minutes if you want to understand there is no way for you to get into the details correct and prasanna that's exactly the beauty of it the more unfamiliar correct the easier it should be for you to skim if it is a familiar topic what happens we get caught into the details we get caught into the um, you know specifics that we already know but if it's a passage that is completely unfamiliar it is a lot more easier for me to take a step back and just look at it and say what is this passage really trying to say what is this you know paragraph really trying to say correct and you know i am going to be very very conscious of not investing my mental energy uh, you know doing so right um now there is one more uh, thing that i've heard okay and that is uh, with regards to mapping okay and uh, i've had people tell me that uh, they have been creating this thing called mapping just uh, just by uh, if you can just type in a yes how many of you use this uh, technique called mapping how many of you use mapping like any sort of mapping like you read a passage and you write something how many of you do that just you can just go ahead and type yes maybe yeah okay so some of you are not mapping uh, and there are others who map okay so here is here is the problem that i have uh, and i don't know it is maybe uh, test prep companies abroad that actually have this thing that you know you need to be accurately summarizing whatever you have read okay see here is my problem if you are such a big genius that you can figure out everything when you read it the first time correct and you need to have this accurate map which kind of tells you where the answers are uh, there is no problem right i mean you pretty much nailed the passage but if you were to you know look at it a lot of times you know people don't know how to do mapping that's the bigger problem okay here is what i would recommend when you do mapping okay remember the map is think of it as a mental pause button correct so what you are doing is you are not really cre creating a very elaborate or pretty map what you are doing what i want you to do is i want you to read and you don't even need to read the entire paragraph okay you can be somewhere in the middle of the paragraph you need to think of it as a mental pause button which means you can always hit the pause button and say wait stop okay i have read so much let me just take a step back and let me just try to understand what is being said over here remember the topic is reading comprehension there are two parts to it there is a reading part and there is a comprehension part correct now what happens you have to think of it as two different functions in your brain right so there is a reading function which is uh, the processing part right like you are just uh, kind of reading through sentences think of it as chewing food okay reading is chewing food comprehension is digesting that food correct so what you need to do is you need to uh, read the passage or read the paragraph read even a part of the paragraph it doesn't matter where you stop wherever you feel a little overwhelmed wherever you feel are there is a lot of things wait stop take a deep breath ask yourself what is he saying he is saying that there are two types of writers you know in uh, france in 18th century the conservative writers and the liberal writers you know net net that what he is saying just write down those three four words okay remember mapping is the by product it is not the end product i want you to remember this nobody cares how your map looks many a times what happens your map will look ugly your map should look ugly because you are not wasting time creating the map instead what you are trying to focus on is you are trying to focus on understanding what is given to you okay now you might ask but arun if it is a mental pause button if it's something that i just need to stop and think about why do i need to really write well there is a reason behind why you need to write if i don't ask you to write if i don't tell you to write the map okay what will happen is you will end up reading not knowing where to stop 
Okay. Let me give you an analogy, right? Let me give you an analogy of why a physical process is uh, required to be attached to a mental task. Okay. And here is what it is. Once there was a famous, uh, you know, tennis player, uh, a tennis coach, and uh, he told his players to focus on the ball. He said, keep your eye on the ball. Correct. So when the uh, opponent is hitting the ball, just make sure you're focusing on it. But the tennis players were all over the court and they were not able to focus on the ball. And the coach wasn't able to understand. He said, well, the instruction is very simple. They need to focus on the ball. But somehow, despite me telling them, they are not able to do so. So what the coach did is instead, he said, what I want you to do is when the ball bounces, I want you to shout bounce. And when you're going to hit the ball, just when you hit the ball, shout hit. Now, just by focusing on these two things, by shouting the word bounce and by shouting the word hit, guess what the players automatically ended up doing? They automatically ended up focusing on the ball. Right? The reason I'm giving you this analogy is because I want you to understand that why are we doing this map? Have you asked yourself, right? why is this map required? This map is required not because it's going to give you some answer. In fact, I would argue that many a times you will realize after reading the passage multiple times that your map could perhaps be even a little wrong. And that's perfectly okay. Your map is meant to be ugly. right? So because what happens once you've written your map, right? You have kind of gone through the process. What you're really doing is you're reading some portions and you're giving your brain time to digest it. That's what you're doing. You do not want to wait to read the entire passage and then digest it because that will be too much. It will be breakfast, lunch and dinner together. Correct. So instead of that, you want to read the first, you know, maybe a few lines. Maybe that's your breakfast. Then you want to read the rest of the paragraph. That's your lunch. And then you want to read the other paragraph. That's your dinner. You want to go slowly. That's the whole idea. You want to break it up. Correct? As I said, it should be minimal. Okay? And what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to, like I told you, right? I'm like that bird circling the field. Correct? I'm just trying to see where things are. I'm not trying to focus. I'm not trying to get into the details. Correct? Now, um, what you might be thinking is, Arun, is it possible for us to answer questions, correct, with a fair degree of uh, confidence if we are not attempting to understand the passage? And I'm going to prove it to you, okay? So what we will do is uh, we will take the passage after this, correct? Uh, and uh, before that, I'll will take I'll just take some questions that you have. Uh, and in case you have any questions, please put it on the chat window. And then I'll be showing you how to do so using a passage. Um, thanks, you, Odai. Uh, Amritya has this, but in the process, won't we lose time? Already it is too sad. So Amritya, that's exactly the point. Remember, you have eight minutes. I want all of you to write it down. Okay. Eight minutes that you have for a passage, maximum seven to eight minutes. If you give yourself more than seven to eight minutes, RC has the potential to damage. See, sentence correction will not damage. Sentence correction, maximum you will take two minutes. Correct. CR also, you will end up taking maybe, you know, three minutes. RC is one area where you may end up consuming the most time. So it's very care, very important that you keep your uh, focus on RC. So no more than seven to eight minutes. Okay. That's the first thing. Under two minutes for reading the passage, five to six minutes for answering the questions. I'm giving you more time to answer the questions because I'm expecting that while you're answering the question, do not trust your memory. I have said this earlier. I will say this again. It is called reading comprehension. It is not called reading recognition. You are not expected to memorize anything. Right? Think of it this way. When you are an executive after your MBA, you are a consultant. What is it that your boss is going to expect from you? He is not going to expect from you to master something. He is expecting you to quickly skim through a lot of content. Correct? As a consultant, that's what you're going to do. As a product manager, that's what you're going to do. Right. You're going to skim through a lot of content. And then when your boss asks you specific questions, you should be able to go back and figure out where to get the answer from. Correct. So that way you will not spend time using this process, because in any case, while answering the questions for each answer option, you are expected to come back to the passage multiple times. Right. 
that's default so please befriend that process regression is good when you are answering questions regression is bad when you are reading the passage so when you are reading the passage please don't keep repeating uh, you know keep reading the same sentence again correct but when you go to the passage you can uh, go to the questions you can come back so amritya i hope that answers your question uh, vimal says can't focus specific on answers in passage my eyes are cheating me uh, vimal of all the topics reading comprehension is that one topic that requires mental energy correct which is what i was telling that you need to have mental energy you need to take a deep breath and you need to care of make sure that you are not getting sucked into the details right think about it gmat is the only topic right where a there is no theory think about it i can in sentence correction i can th teach you theory subject verb parallelism comparison tenses but in reading comprehension there is really no theory correct and this is also the only topic where the answer is given to you and then they ask you the question if you were to be a gmat test setter how would you approach it correct you are actually giving the answers in the passage right and then you are asking the questions so the way gmat is going to trick you is gmat is going to trick you by giving you traps in the answer options that's why i'm telling just make sure that you focus on the questions and the answer options don't waste too much time on the passage okay and when we get to the passage i'll be showing you how to do it uh, ricky had this question how to get well acquainted with gmat rc passages i struggle with passages on human science and bioscience okay <clears throat> just to give you a background i've been teaching reading comprehension since 2001 right that makes it 18 years of teaching gmat uh, you know uh, reading comprehension and you know over these years i have read probably every resource that is out there uh, how to read faster and you know these online quizzes which tell you how to uh, you know uh, how to measure your reading speed i'll tell you all of that is a sham correct in fact one of the biggest myth that has been propagated is please read uh, you know new york times please read wall street journal are how much can you read how many years do you have correct you have to take the gmat in the next one two months remember it's a skill it's not a question of your knowledge right so gmat is also smart gmat says look this guy should be able to uh, you know read any kind of content without getting pulled into it that's what gmat is testing you so if you are going to fall for gmat trap by getting into the details reading everything about that social science passage or that bio passage everything that you need to know would be given to you in that passage gmat is not expecting you to bring any kind of general knowledge from outside so please uh, this whole strategy of reading different magazines my suggestion it's crappy waste of time uh, don't do that okay um i am just looking at the next question and then i am going to uh, get to the passage so i have kash uh, kashika with us who says if i skim through the passage i am not 100% confident marking there kashika this is something that i had mentioned in my please previous webinar on guessing strategy you don't need to be 100% confident okay get rid of this fear that you need to be 100% confident you just need to know how to eliminate the wrong answer options correct and and that's that's really what what you need to do uh, amartya uh, you need to practice uh, enough practice tests you should be able to get well uh, do very well on this i have had students who have done nothing except read what is on their facebook feed how many of you today only consumption of content is whatever facebook throws at you i have had students who have that much of reading they say arun i have never read i have always watched videos right i have always watched tv correct and those students have today scored 42 44 in verbal and they have cracked rc using this technique correct um suhel your question uh, a prasanna before that prasanna strategy perfect for both short and long passages doesn't matter prashant what will happen if you read the first question and read the passage is instead of skimming first and then scanning guess what you will end up doing you will end up scanning correct and if you end up scanning you will not get the big picture view remember we want a bird's eye view we don't want a worm's eye view worm's eye view everything looks big right bird's eye view you are looking at it from a uh, 30000 feet overview okay um <clears throat> sujay says if i skim the passage i see words like still nowadays hour by the end i get lost uh, i'm not sure uh, how sujay uh, so the whole idea is 
you should be paying attention to some words right when i say skimming you also need to identify your core message is lying somewhere okay so let me give you an example right what gmat is really doing is think about it this way there is a 5 year old boy okay or a 4 year old uh, child now let's say the ch child were to go and tell its uh, mother mama toffee okay it just says mama toffee now what does the child really want the child wants toffee and who is uh, you know the child addressing the request to to the mother correct now all gmat passages no think of it this way there is some mama toffee somewhere but what happens gma takes that mama toffee stretches it it says mother can you please provide me with some toffee then on harder passages it will stretch it even more it will say mother passer of my dna please provide me with some pocket money to buy some uh, uh, confectionery right and then when you get to a 800 level question right gmat will say oh mother passer of my dna please provide me with the monetary sustenance to consume this confectionery which will help me meet my daily calorific need what is it saying mama toffee correct so it's our job to get this mama toffee from the paragraph think of it as a treasure hunt correct and you need to basically understand that there is only 20% that is important Rest eighty percent GMAT is going to give you all these extra sentences which are of no use. Correct. <clears throat> so if you have understood this, okay, I would want to give you the first passage. All right, and let's see how well you do on the first passage. Ayushi Bajpai, just on that point, this is exactly why I gave you the reason to write. the reason you write is because you attach a physical process it becomes a lot easier okay so abhishek datta i would say the best source are the official gmat passages themselves correct so uh, make sure that you do not do any non official question uh, this is again something that i said in the previous webinar in case you have not had a look at it uh, i would suggest you go have a look at it all right so just do official so og verbal review and uh, you know the official question pack that should be enough all right good so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to give you the first passage okay and what i want you to do is i want you to solve it in 3 minutes and and i've got two, two minutes and your time starts now two minutes okay and make sure you map it One minute over. One minute left. last 20 seconds and stop okay i want you to stop 
and uh, at this point probably how many of you have not been able to complete the passage can you just say yes can you just type yes how many of you were complete the passage i'm waiting okay so not able to complete the passage right see i tell you uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, give you a map or i'm going to uh, try doing this passage the way i would have done it had i read it for the first time okay so let's start reading this passage let us start seeing whether uh there is a better way in which we could have done this correct uh now what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to just give you a resource before that in case you are still reading um maybe you want to just go ahead and quickly read through what is left okay so great now by the way there is just a resource that i wanted to give you a uh, blog on that so first of all remember that uh, there will be a lot of details it's our job not to get sucked into the details all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you how i would have read this passage okay so when i start i always start slow because remember if you're going to start very fast you will not be able to get the anchor correct so what happens is we have to make sure that we are able to anchor ourselves remember you need that anchor without that anchor it's going to be very confusing right so i'm going to start slow how many people really suffer as a result of labor market problems do i need to know what labor market problems are i don't correct i'm just reading it i just got that registered then it says this is one of the most significant yet controversial social policy questions now by now it has established okay um okay you know what i would not be reading it out aloud if i am uh, solving it i would do that in my mind okay so i just wanted to say that uh, don't time me right now but in my mind i would be a lot faster right now i am trying to give you a peek into my mind as to how i would approach this passage okay does it make sense <clears throat> so i have to go slow suresh babu because i can't um you know rush through everything i will tell you what to rush through okay just be patient with me please i will show you what to rush through so it says labor market problems it says this is one of the most significant yet controversial social policy questions i don't even know what it is it says in many ways our social statistics exaggerate the degree of hardship okay so i am just writing this it says uh labor market problem i don't even know what it is okay uh then i say social stats by the way i don't even know what social stat statistics are okay but he is saying that they tend to exaggerate right uh the hardship so what i'm doing right now is uh, i'm just going ahead and i'm just trying to make a note remember you don't need to wait for the map to be done at the end of the paragraph it's a mental pause button you can stop here right then it says unemployment does not have the same bleak consequences what are the bleak consequences uh, poor consequences right so he says it does not have the bleak consequences today as it did in the 1930s you know when unemployed were primary breadwinners when income and earnings were usually much closer to the margin of subsistence you know what is happening right now i am now trying to i'm getting i'm zoned off okay and when there are no counter in my mind this is all garbled i cannot afford to invest my mental energy trying to understand this right i need i don't know a masters in development economics in order for me to understand this yeah i don't have that i don't have a phd in this so what i'm doing is remember i told you skipping i told you skipping and scanning correct but i didn't say skipping so i still have to read so i'm still reading earnings and income data also overstate and see what happens here's a beautiful thing that happens when i'm reading okay i'm not focusing on nouns and all that 
correct digvijay don't don't get into the, all this grammar how will i remember what is the noun and verb and all that here don't try to complicate just read this you will see this overstate you see that okay uh, mitigated correct uh, so when you are reading you will also get a sense of the other thing happening now at this point to be very honest i've just read the whole paragraph and i've not really understood much i'll be very honest i have not understood much i just know social statistics seems to exaggerate and then he seems to be giving some examples okay that's what i read it as now i read the second paragraph yet see when you see these words no especially at the start of the paragraph start to recognize a lot of gmat is about building your sense of anticipation okay virat kohli does not hit that short because you know he did some mental mathematics and he looked at you know the trajectory of the ball and all that right so what he is doing is he is basically trying to in develop his instinct of anticipation correct so issue to answer your question which data to skip is really the skill that you need to build from today till the point you take the gma how to extract mama toffee is the skill that you need to build from today till the gma it's a ongoing process developing your sense of anticipation correct now i have said yaar yet it means it is the brother of however that means he is going to say something that is different okay so these are all mental notes i am making with practice with solving 100 passages this is where you will eventually reach okay yet there are also many ways our social statistics underestimate the degree of labor market related hardship you know what now i have a smile on my face you know why because i know that social statistics also under estimate correct so the moment i figured it i know that the rest of the second paragraph is going to be about how it underestimates correct what we suresh i thought i i hope that's in a you know humorous note correct because uh, i am see uh, the whole idea is to kind of look at it as a personal thing right like how do you react to the passage correct so when you are reading the second paragraph you need to understand that all the passage is all the paragraph is saying is how it's underestimating so then what i do i read it under employment counts millions of this low wages and repeated and prolonged unemployment frequently interact to undermine the capacity so i am reading all of it okay and here is a very important point a lot of times i heard students say that arun when i am reading such a dense passage or a paragraph though i know that i should be paying attention on the passage guess what happens my mind goes on a different trip my mind is thinking are may or my office there is you know there is going to be like a layoff i hope i don't get laid off right oh my friend who got laid off you are suddenly you know imagining things and that's the beauty of the mind so every time you kind of uh, lose your concentration lose your focus it's okay with practice you should be able to do it just gently get your attention back to the passage okay and in case it's happened in one particular sentence you can always go back and read that sentence correct but i am going to read the second paragraph in under 20 30 seconds correct i don't have the time and neither am i going to be able to understand this right what i am doing is i am actually saving all my fuel for the questions correct so now i'll look at the last paragraph again i'm going to quickly go through it as a result of such contradictory evidence it's uncertain whether the you know now i have a call back to labor market problem so i understood that he is actually trying to answer the labor market problem he is saying that if i use social statistics they either exaggerate or they underestimate okay and then he says therefore social statistics inadequate for assessing measuring labor market problem that's it okay so now once you have understood this much see i want to ask all of you would you be able to understand this much that's all you need to understand what you see on the right hand side is a map obviously when i write it i will write it will be a little more shabbier than what you see right now but are you getting a sense any questions on this prasanna by the way your map very good okay so whatever person has typed is is the kind of map that you don't need to explain to anyone right you don't need to uh, kind of uh, uh, really uh, worry anything 
Uh, Amartya, actually, I'll tell you what the first idol, idleness is because there is a question that we will see later on, but to a large extent, you know. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll give you a question based on it. Now you're wondering, but Arun, with this much of understanding, do I, you know, would I be able to answer a question? Correct. So let me do this. Let me try, um, you know, kind of helping you with answering a question. All right. So let's take the first question. So I'm not saying whether let, let's forget about the answer options. Correct. Because I don't want to look at the answer options at this point. I'm just asking you because today's session is about mapping, right? It's about understanding the passage. Would you be able to answer this question? What do you think is the principal topic? Correct. Amritya, we don't even have the questions, right? So don't worry about it. Don't worry about this bold word itself. It's just that it kind of got retained. So can anyone give a stab what, what this should be? <clears throat> Correct. Perfect. And social statistics, it's actually labor market problems and how social statistics are inadequate. I'm pretty sure, correct, when you actually look at the answer options, you will be able to answer it. Do you agree? We will not look at it, but I'm just going to go through uh, the, the questions this way. Correct? Let's take the next one. Right? What do you, does the author want to show by citing those who are repeatedly unemployed during a 12-month period? Now, what I'm going to do, Vimal, by the way, unemployment is not the, the main topic. The main topic is how social statistics is inadequate, correct? Now, the question over here is what does the author want to show by citing those who are repeatedly unemployed? Now, where is repeatedly unemployed? Where is it mentioned? If you realize, this is actually mentioned in the second paragraph, correct? Low wages and repeated or prolonged unemployment, correct? This is part are frequently interact to undermine blah 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 since those correct somewhere over here. Now the whole idea is now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this sentence and I'm going to obviously read you know the sentence before and after correct. I will read this very carefully. Why? Because my answer depends on it. When I read it the first time, okay. I was just, so see the thing is Prashant, think about it. How many sentences do you have? Correct. So what you need to do is quickly look at it. If you are not clear, no problem. Just go back and just quickly read the first paragraph, right? Where is prolonged uh, unemployment anywhere, anywhere, anywhere? No, it's not there. Okay. Let me go to the second. Where is, ah, now it's there. That is why I'm saying, see, you spent two minutes in reading the passage, correct? So it is not that you didn't have time. So you didn't spend two minutes. Let's assume you didn't understand. No problem. Just go back and read it. Now that I know where it is, correct? I'm going to give it all the time. I'm going to go through all the five answer choices to make sure I'm able to answer it. Correct? <clears throat> now let's look at uh, one more question. Let us say this question. Can you suggest a proposal with best response to the issues raised by the author? Correct. Now, think about it. Where is the issue mentioned? Issue is mentioned in the third paragraph. It's see any time that you have something like this, always understand. Correct. Um, where is the you know first paragraph? Where is the last paragraph? Correct. So the first paragraph usually will give you the sense or the last paragraph. So I go back. I read the last paragraph. Right. And now realize this is an inference question, correct? So this inference question is asking you, okay, to actually tell whether, um, you know, uh, this particular, you know, uh, uh, you know, thing, you know, so you probably will have an answer choice, correct? Which will tell that you should include something more than social statistics, right? So that's really, it says, they are inadequate. So that means they are probably are looking at 
something else apart from social statistics i'll go through the answer options four according to the passage one factor that causes unemployment to over predict now tell me where is over predict over predict is exaggerate and when you look at exaggerate you will be looking at the first paragraph now what i want you to do go to the first paragraph now spend time correct now spend time reading it i have no problem why because your answer to the question is dependent on this and think about it i am telling that on a tough question a tough inference question you can take 2 uh, minutes that's okay how much will you read in 2 minutes right now the interesting thing is when you are doing scanning okay you will probably read the passage at least 10 to 12 times in fact in a tough inference question you will probably go back to the passage five times for each answer option you need to go back correct so you are going to read the passage multiple times now you know the bird that is circling the field is now flying down stooping down to go for the kill right so now you need to go into specific areas in the field where your prey is or specific areas in the passage where you know your answer is and this is the skill that you need to develop right a lot of people don't pay attention to reading comprehension it always is like a you know a poor man sentence correction correct <clears throat> so sujay no first read the passage okay read the part of the paragraph where the answer lies try to see what should you expect so having a framework to expect and then going to the passage is the key correct then go to the five answer options but first read the passage all right so all of you comfortable with what i'm saying if you are comfortable i'm going to give you one more passage but before that if you have any questions anything that i haven't answered um i will just take a quick minute or so and then i'll give you the next passage and then we will uh, wrap it up for today so i hope you are able to get a sense of uh, where we are proceeded how we are thinking about the gmat how we are thinking about the passage and you know this is where i want to uh, you know kind of say that you know people who are who have not uh, okay shiva good news on the gmat you will not get a question called what's the tone of the passage okay that's done and dusted you might find a very old official question that might talk about it but today you need to know tone to help you answer the questions that's a slightly advanced technique uh, that is that may not be uh, something that we may be able to cover in today's session but that question will not appear on the gmat uh, sujay says sometimes options deviate the framework i build after reading para you know what you are saying basically that after reading the options uh, you are not able to find the answer in the map am i saying uh, am i right in that you are not supposed to go back to your map go back to the passage why are you looking at the map see the map at best can serve as a compass it can just point you in the direction it's not google maps correct it is not going to get you there directly so don't expect your map to give you the answers right so bharat if the passage is difficult and you understand only parts of it that's exactly precisely what i wanted to show with this particular passage this was a fairly complex passage right if you really want to test my intelligence give me this passage give me 5 minutes i will understand it in uh, you know in its entirety and i will answer questions based on it but gmat is saying look i don't care whether you answer this uh, whether you understand this passage gmat is saying all that i care is that you answer the questions right uh diego i would say this is uh, unless and until you see the answers uh, you will not be able to really uh, kind of uh, uh, gauge the level but i would still say this is uh, definitely a good 700 level uh, 35 35 level verbal uh, uh, level problem uh, last two questions and then i'll get on to the next passage uh divya says uh, i have a problem with how author feels about the topic uh, as i said divija it comes under tone uh, there are some solutions but maybe uh, won't be able to cover it in the scope correct but uh, really that's on uh, tone prashant says i get really confused in the question where did the passage uh, was printed what option prashant please tell me right now go to google please tell me which official question has this 
you are trusting the wrong sources this is all cat okay so i don't think gmat uh, really has had a lot of passages that are i have i have found most of the passages to be uh, pretty much uh, you know straight forward i don't think there are a lot of uh, uh, passages like that uh, just to give a background so uh, at, as part of crack verbal we have an online free course uh, in case you have not checked it out i would request you to go check it out i'm going to give you a free resources a few resources in the end okay uh, so uh, check it out uh, we do have online private lessons as well correct um, so uh, gracias <laughs> so vimal can't make it practical sir i can't concentrate vimal that is the challenge in unless and until you are not able to address the challenge okay you would not be able to get it so what you are really telling is i cannot solve reading comprehension so we need to sit discuss there is a lot more thought process uh, maybe you know we can look at it later um bharat no it does not ask about tone of the passage okay don't worry <clears throat> all right uh, the only external sources i'm just going to say this uh, og okay uh, verbal review and uh, exam pack questions these are the only sources uh, that i'm going to suggest all right okay <clears throat> i'm going to give you another 2 minutes and i'm going to give you the next passage so please be ready the next passage and your 2 minutes starts now last 30 seconds all right so i give you an extra 10 seconds in the end in good measure how many of you still not able to read it fully how many of you are somewhere in the third or fourth paragraph okay uh, so i asked a question so what else said passage this is a gmat passage okay one thing i want to tell you please do not do lsat pa passages lsat rc passage lsat cr okay don't do this right so great issue 
and uh, Vimal. Okay, you have got the process. You have kind of uh, you know uh, you know you you kind of got a sense of it. So here is what I'm going to do. Is this time around I'm going to uh, maybe draw a map. Just tell me uh, if this looks uh, better. Okay. So first, I read the first paragraph. I understand that it's about pain, correct? And that's all, right? I mean, it's about pain. First paragraph, think about it. At this point, there is nothing much that I can get to know. And then I get on to the second paragraph. Getting into the second paragraph, you have to be careful. You know why? Because there is a lot of details that can drag you inside. I was a little slow in the first sentence. In fact, the first paragraph is just one sentence, correct? So I read that sentence. I am a little slow getting into the second, uh, you know, paragraph. And uh, when I get into the second paragraph, what I do is, uh, <clears throat> what I can do is, uh, you know, uh, just try not to get into the details. It says when a cell is injured, a rush of prostaglandins. Do you realize a word like prostaglandin? If you have never heard it before that can also cause you to panic, right? Because it's a, it's a very technical word. But here is the thing. You don't need to know that. You just need to know rush of something sensitizes nerve endings at the injury. Prostaglandins are chemicals produced virtually from this when they are injured. So it's just all I know is that prosta, you know, gladdens are being produced, correct? At the nerve. Then it talks about some drugs uh, and it goes on to say that uh, uh, there are some drugs that uh, end up, uh, you know, blocking these enzymes, correct? Now what I do, I can't invest more time because I have already lost time, right? Because I have been a little slow. Now it is time for me to catch up. So between the two minutes, I would have probably spent the first minute reading only the first two paragraphs, correct? Now what I do is I get into the second paragraph and then I see this from nerve endings at the injury, pain signals move to nerves, speeding, feeding into the spinal cord. How many of you read it and said, wow, I got it. So the first time he was talking about nerve endings, correct? This time he's talking about spinal cord. And over this, he is talking about something called a substance P, right? Now I may choose to write or not write the drugs, but I'm just reading it, right? You know, trust me, you think anybody would be able to understand this sentence. I'm just going to read this sentence. Local anesthetics such as Novocaine and Xylocaine work by blocking the electrical stimulation transmission along nerves in a particular area. They inhibit the flow of sodium ions through the membranes, making the nerves electrically quiescent. Thus, no pain signals are sent. It is too complex for me, man. I can't understand this. Remember, I'm still mapping. Correct? I'm not trying to understand. That's what it's important. When you see a tough passage, uh, you know, great. Because a tough passage actually gives you uh, the, the other additional uh, thing that you don't need to get sucked into the details because you're not understanding it. Correct? And then it says, oh, you know what? By the time I read the third paragraph, fourth paragraph, my speed has increased. Because the first sentence is brain, my, my brain automatically has got it. Now he's talking about brain. What is the thing he's talking about over here? Endorphins. That's it. And I've realized that he is giving examples of drugs to prevent this pain. Are all of you comfortable with the map that I drew? Are all of you comfortable with this map? You have any questions? Then we will get on to the questions based on this. Perfect, Gaurav. That's it. So, Prashant, your map, great. Okay? Even if you have additional details, there is no need for you to worry. Okay? There is no need for you to worry even if there are additional so so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the actual questions let's start with the 
first question let us take the first one the passage is primarily concerned with okay now with this much of understanding correct i am going to get into the passage just go through the five answer options please So, uh, the problem with answer option D is, remember, the question is asking you, what is the primary purpose? What is it primarily concerned with? What you'll realize is that endorphins is mentioned, right, only in the last paragraph, right? So, that cannot be the main point. Let me see if there is a strike through option. So... Yeah, so let me just do this. Yeah, got it. Right? Cannot be that. Uh, answer option A says, uh, you know, answer option A says, analyzing ways that I'm going to hold on to A. Let me look at uh, D. So D says, acupuncture. Again, I know that acupuncture is mentioned only in one part. Cannot be the primary purpose. Correct? E says, differentiating the kinds of pain that occur, he is not differentiating the pain, right? So answer option E goes off. Now I'm left with answer option A and C. Answer option A says, analyzing the ways enzymes and other chemicals influence how body feels the pain. You know what? Actually, that's a good answer. But it loses out to C because C also has one more additional thing, which is describe how... Um, you know, the pain signals are conveyed and discussing ways in which the signal can be blocked. Correct? C for Charlie. And what I'm just saying is with that much of understanding, you can quickly zone in and you can get to the right answer. Right? And you don't need to spend more than two minutes. Let's take one more question. Correct? Let's take one more question. Yeah, Oday. Let's see it is. Just have a look at it. Now, what do I do over here is I just look at it and say endorphins, where is it mentioned, right? I go to the last paragraph. Just think about it. The last paragraph, when I read it the first time, I spent under, I don't know, 20 seconds reading it because I just quickly went through it. Okay, endorphins, peptides, blah, 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 you know, I didn't really spend a lot of time. Now I go back and say, okay, where is he talking about? Noah Kane, where is he talking about it? He's talking about it in the third paragraph, correct? So can I remove answer option A for alpha? Right? Now, I'm using the same logic. Ibuprofen, first paragraph, goes off. Local anesthetic, third paragraph, goes off. Aspirin, first paragraph, goes off. What is left? Answer option E. I mark and move on. Right? So do you realize that your actual task of answering the questions is, is really the focus? Correct? So because you have spent less time reading the passage, you are not, let, not just left with more time uh, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, process the answer options. You also have the liberty of going back to the passage multiple times, reading it, understanding it. Correct? Uh, let's take one more. I'm going to take uh, one more. So let's look at it. Maybe slightly tougher. It's an inference question.
All right. Do you have any answers? Yeah. We got D, we have B. Okay. Any other answer options? All right, so this could be a slightly more trickier question as opposed to the earlier questions, right? Any other answer options? I'm just looking at it. I know there's a lag between me speaking and uh, the thing appearing on the chat. So, okay, so we got a couple of answers. I'm assuming that was enough time for you to uh, actually read and understand. Uh, let's get started with uh, looking at this question. So it says prostaglandin synthetase is partially blocked, which will happen. Now what I do first job is to figure out where is prostaglandin synthetase. I found this over here, correct? So I say, okay, so it basically, uh, if it is blocked, then uh, the drug's effectiveness against pain is proportional to their success in blocking this enzyme at the site of the injury. So what I know is that this pain signal will somehow get lessened, correct? It will get lowered. Now what I do, I go to the first, uh, para uh, the, the subsequent paragraph uh, and just try to see, well, uh, there is no other mention of uh, this thing. All I know is it is going to get, uh, you know, go to go down. At this point, let me jump into the anthro options. Some endorphins will be produced and some pain signals will be intensified. Okay. So some endorphins will be produced. Sure. At some point, there will be some endorphins produced because eventually there will be some pain signals that will definitely reach. But will the pain signals be intensified? The answer is no, correct? The pain signals are not going to get intensified. Now let me read B. Some substance P is likely to be produced. If some of the uh, cyclo, the prostaglandin is uh, stopped, the other prostaglandin, some, more, some will be released. No, some will stop, some will be released. Which means some substance P will also get generated so some pain signals will reach the pain. So you know what? Very hard for me to eliminate B. So I'm going to hold on to B. I'm going to read C. Some sodium ions will be blocked. So some pain signals will not reach the brain. Let me understand where is sodium ions being mentioned. I am going to go and read this line. They inhibit the flow of sodium ions. Question to you. What is inhibiting the flow of sodium ions? It is the local anesthetics, correct? It is the local anesthetics which are blocking it. So it is not the, pro the prostaglandin synthetase. That itself, the chain, is not causing sodium ions. So if sodium uh, prostaglandin synthetase is only partially blocked, I do not know whether uh, you know sodium ions are going to be inhibited because that happens because of local anesthetic. So for that reason, I am going to go ahead and eliminate C. Answer option D. Some pros. What answer option D says is production of substance B will be prevented. Right? We know that substance P will be reduced, but to say that it will be prevented is an extreme answer. That leaves you with answer option E. Talks about some peptides will receive pain signals. Yeah, sure. He is calling endorphins as a class of peptides. So I'm not very sure whether I can say some peptides, but that's okay. Look at the other part. They begin to regulate incoming pain traffic. See, I have to look for an answer choice that is going to reduce it. Correct? Not looking at regulating it. Regulating it means at some point it could even increase it. For that reason, E for echo goes, down, goes off. What am I left with? Answer option B. Again, my focus here is to say, uh, you know, don't worry whether you got this question right or wrong. My, uh, what I'm trying to present to your submission is just this simple technique that don't focus. Uh, remember that there are two parts, skimming and scanning. Don't focus too much while you're skimming, while you're scanning, 
you can keep coming back to the passage and read it as many times as you are uh, wrong. Odai, you know what? Anyone who's been preparing for the GMAT, you've been just preparing for one day. Let me tell you, a lot of us preparing for many months, we go through the same days, you know. <clears throat> uh, the problem with RC is there is this feast and famine cycle. Some days you'll get all four right. Some days you'll get zero out of four right. Okay. So don't worry. All in a day's game. So, um, okay. So, and uh, with this, let's get to the, you know, yeah. So I think pretty much we had uh, the last, let me just kind of wrap it up over here. Right. We are already at about uh, 9.48. Right. Uh, I hope the last one, um, you know, uh, hour was useful help to clarify. And as I said, I've been teaching the GMATs, uh, you know, for a long, long time. I've been teaching reading comprehension since 2001. I understand uh, what goes inside your mind. Unfortunately, a lot of techniques that are today, uh, you know, peddled are techniques that may look great, but on the GMAT, they don't work. I can guarantee that the technique that, uh, you know, I am teaching you is a technique that will help you on the GMAT, okay? And uh, there are just like a couple of other things that I just wanted to uh, show, which is uh, in case uh, you want, you can always go. Uh, we have a free GMAT online course, correct? Um, so I'll just type the course detail over here. So you can just go to uh, crack verbal dot com uh, slash gmat slash online so this is a free online course correct so uh, please feel free to have a look at it um, and uh, there is also a video that is actually part of the course uh, so you kind of get a good sense of how I teach the course as well. Uh, Neeraj, this is something that we discussed in the guessing strategy. The answer is yes. Uh, my suggestion would be to guess um, uh, inference questions, correct, rather than uh, any other questions. Uh, there is also, let me just give you, uh, let me just give you what is the more important thing. I think uh, some of it is... Let me just give you. So just go to the YouTube channel. That's another thing that I would suggest. Uh, please go to the YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of videos, a lot of tips, not just on uh, async reading comprehension, but also how to study for the GMAT, correct? Uh, and uh, we have a ton of resources on how to apply, especially if you're an Indian candidate uh, looking at applying. Uh, we got a ton of tips there. Uh, and in case you found this, uh, session to be useful. I will also be active on GMAT Club. Uh, my ID uh, is Arun at, at the rate Crack Verbal. So uh, you could follow me and, uh, you know, I would be answering questions on the forum as well. Correct. So uh, I hope uh, today's session was helpful and I hope it was useful for you. Uh, the computer adaptiveness does not apply inside a passage, Vimal. The questions in that sense are pre-selected for you. Uh, the free resources, uh, I will give you that. I'll give you the URL over here. Again, uh, just give me a second. I'll just, um, <clears throat> in fact, I'll just uh, go ahead and uh, share the So if you can just go to crackverbal.com slash GMAT, right? Uh, under the top, you have uh, something called as uh, free resources. So I'll just uh, show you where you would be able to find it. So, so yeah, so that's the resource you see over here, the free resources section. So you can go to the free resources, <clears throat> correct? Uh, so we have a bunch of videos, we have eBooks, we have uh, the webinars that we have conducted. We also have uh, solutions. So it's uh, crackfobble.com slash free resources slash GMAP. All right, so thanks a lot. Uh, it was really a pleasure coming and sharing my thoughts on the GMAP with you. Uh, in case you have any questions, uh, you can always reach out to me. Uh, I'll just give you my email address. 
it is arun j uh, at the rate at the rate crackverbal.com thanks a lot and uh, let us uh, be in touch yeah thank you gaurav thanks bharat thanks vimal thanks neeraj thanks bhupender i'm glad that i was uh, of uh, help yeah thank you everyone and uh, have a great rest of the week uh, and uh, happy studying for the gmat thank you